Hey guys, my name is Kovi. Today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to make this low poly background image in Blender. It's going to be nice, quick, and easy. And this is how it looks like in a 3D view. This is super versatile. It can work as backgrounds. It can work in a number of images. And it's just a really cool background piece. It's quick and easy to make. Anyway, guys, let's jump straight into it. So once you have a new Blender document open, we're going to hit A and we're going to hit A again and we're going to delete all of the starting items. We don't need any of them. If you're kind of new to Blender, I have a thing down here in the bottom left. Any buttons or keys I press will show up down here so you can see everything that's going on. So now that we have everything removed, we are going to be adding a new plane. And we're going to be doing this by hitting Shift and A and we're going to go to Mesh and then Plane. And this is what we're going to need for the very beginning. I'm going to hit up the end key and for this you're just going to make sure the location for everything on the x y and z axis is zero 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 this is just so that when we're uh, trying to take pictures of this later it'll be a bit easier for us to figure everything out so now that we have it centered we're going to hit the s key and we're going to just scale it up to about the size of like the starting cube you can scale it a bit bigger if you want or you can scale it a bit smaller it really just depends on you now that we have it scaled, I'm going to be moving it up slightly just because this initial like frame and like ruler lines uh, make it a bit difficult to see the low poly as we're making this. So now that we have this done, we're going to be hitting the tab key and we are going to be subdividing this. You do this by hitting W and by clicking subdivide and just do this a couple of times. Uh, I would just do it four times. That's about right. Now that we have our thing subdivided, we're going to be hitting the A key to deselect. And this is where we actually make everything low poly of five. We, we're going to select some of these points and we're going to drag them up and down to make our low poly image. Now, in case you don't actually see these points, you might be in a different style of vertices. So if you hit the control and tab key, you can select your style of vertices and just make sure you're on vertex. Just click that and make sure you're on vertex so we can select our individual points. So now that we have that done, we're going to be selecting random points on this plane and we're going to be dragging them up and down. So I'm going to just select a couple of points by holding shift and just right clicking a couple of points. And I'm going to be using the blue arrow, dragging it up or down to bring my points up and down. Now, our goal here is to remove all of the flat surfaces and just make a nice random sample of up and downness, if that's even a word. We're just trying to make a nice variation of low poly on our uh, plane so that our image looks kind of random and it doesn't necessarily look uniform. Now, if you want to make yours uniform, you absolutely can by just like going through the image carefully and making it nice and even. I like a bit of randomness to mine and that's how we're going to be doing it. If you do want it even more random, what you can do is just select your couple of points and by hitting the G key, we're going to be able to freely move our, our, uh, our vertices. So if I hit G right now, you can see I can freely move our vertices up and down and this can just give a nice extra random feel of randomness as you can like really just SQ some of your things rather than having to do a point by point uh, with your left and right arrows. You can click G and just move your mouse around freely. It's just another option that you can do to really like diversify your low poly. So once you have most of the uh, flatness removed, uh, I would recommend removing as much as possible. Uh, you can leave one or two flat points as it can look nice on an image, but if you overdo flatness, it really just kind of, it, it just breaks the illusion of uh, low poly. And I think we are just about done right now with what I want to achieve. And once you feel you are done, you simply want to hit the tab key. I'm, I, know, I know I'm saying this and I'm doing one more point. So I've, I think I'm happy with that. Once you're done, you want to hit the tab key uh, to go out of edit mode and you can see and look around to see how it looks like. I'm pretty happy with this right now. Now that we're happy with this, our next step is to add back in a camera. And with our camera, we're going to hit shift and A and we're going to select camera. I'm going to hit back the N key again, just so we can move our camera around to set it up perfectly. I'm going to select the location of the camera to zero on all three of the coordinates, just like we did with the plan at the start. And I'm going to do the same with the rotation. So our camera is looking directly down by setting all of the coordinates to zero. I actually missed that and zero for the Z also. Now that we've that done, I'm going to drag my camera directly up using the blue arrow and I'm going to bring it up just so we can see as much of the poly and plane as possible. So by hitting zero on your numpad, you should be able to see inside the camera's view. And I'm going to just bring this up a little bit higher and zero one more time. And I'm pretty much happy with that. On the outside, you can see it's a bit more flat, but we're really just looking for this center bit of goodness. Now, if you wanted, you could also put a slight rotation on the Z key. If we come over here, we can put a slight rotation on the Z, uh, which is going to just add a bit of an angle to, sorry, I clicked render by accident. It's going to have a bit of an angle to the poly, which can really like just make it look a bit different and uh, it can just make it look a bit nicer. 
So to get out of the camera view, you want to rotate with your middle mouse. And I think I'm relatively happy right now. Our next step is to add a light source so that when we render this, we can actually see what's going on instead of darkness. So we're going to hit shift and A one more time. We're going to come down to lamp and we're going to put in a hemi. Now our hemi is going to point directly down. So all you have to do is drag it straight up and we can hit a quick render by hitting F12. And as you can tell, our image is super bright and saturated right now, but we can start to see our low poly coming into shape. Now this is way too strong right now, so we're gonna select our light source by right clicking it. And on our right hand side panel, we can select the light down like this. So we're gonna be selecting that and we're gonna be turning down the energy to about 0.4 and 0.5, somewhere between that. And if we test that by clicking F12 for a quick render, we can tell it looks much more natural and it looks pretty actually really nice right now. So we're gonna hit escape one more time to get out of that. So our next step is to give our low poly plane a material. I would recommend putting the low poly a slight gray color as you can really just change the color and post in most photo editing softwares. Unless you're just using this as your outright final destination, I'd recommend putting it gray. It just saves a bit of time later as you're not trying to come back into Blender every time to change the color. So we need to select our plane by right clicking it and we're going to come to the materials on the right hand side, this little circle. We're gonna be clicking new and we are going to be selecting our color down here into diffuse. Now I already have a gray color that I want to choose, which is a hex decimal color, which I'm just gonna come in here and paste in. I'll leave a link in the description to this, or I'll just leave the value in the description. If you click enter, the color is going to change to this gray. You can change the intensity, which I am gonna turn down a little bit because I like my low poly planes to be kind of dark. And if we hit F12 one more time, we can see this is our result. I'm quite happy with this. There are a couple of flat points in here that I would actually want to fix. And you can very easily do that by just hitting tab and you can come in and just edit the flat points by dragging your vertices around. It's pretty easy to do and it can really make some nice results. It works for a lot of images and it's just a nice little background piece. And it's just, it's kind of unique. And I just, I, low poly is probably one of my favorite styles and it just looks really cool. It's really interesting. It's just something different. Anyway, guys, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to drop a like, subscribe if you're new. If there's any other tutorials you'd like to see me make, let me know in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time, as always, keep it saucy. Peace.